Hey there, and welcome back to the last episode of the Daily Double Shot this quarter. Andre, didn't you do stand-ups in the last episode? Yeah, so? That's oh. hardly fair. Uh, well, life's not fair. Your face isn't fair. Your tie's stupid. Hey there, welcome back to the last episode of the Daily Double Shot this quarter. I'm assistant producer Andre Stackhouse. And I'm executive producer Austin Seedendorf. In this recap episode, we're going to show you some of our favorite segments from this quarter. Prepare for nostalgia. Up first, we revisit our profile on Louis Jackman's participation in the Mr. Greek pageant. We check out the awesomeness that is the UW climbing community. We remember the massive flash mob in Red Square for Alex Penny's wish to bring world peace with robots. We see if we can keep up with the Husky Running Club. We keep in mind that some UW students are building a rocket due to launch in April. Lauren Lemieux reviews the tattoos that our men's basketball team has been collecting. And we revisit the most magical days of winter quarter, our snowpocalypse. All coming up on The Daily's Double Shot. Andre, do you think I could compete in the Mr. Greek pageant? Not in a million years. How about now? <laughs> Dear God, Mr. Greek pageant up next. Why is it that every year the manliest men on Greek row put on silly costumes and sing and dance in front of hundreds of people? The reason would be the Mr. Greek pageant. Every year, the Alpha Gamma Delta sorority puts on the pageant as a fundraiser for Treehouse for Kids, a local nonprofit organization that provides foster children opportunities, and the Alpha Gamma Delta Foundation, which benefits juvenile diabetes research. We spoke with one contestant as he readied himself to compete for the title of Mr. Greek. Meet Louis Jackham, a freshman in Beta Theta Pi fraternity. Hey, baby. Have I seen you in the quad before? No. Well, you look so savory. <laughs> he began preparing for the pageant last September when he was still a pledge in his house. Going back to middle school, I performed a little bit when I first started making music. Uh, I play violin. I played violin for 11 years and guitar. Or, you know, violin recitals kind of whipped me into shape for this kind of thing. In high school, I would, I would play. We had something called Follies, which was basically just our, our uh, talent show. So I did that every year. No part of what I do is about the spotlight. I'm actually more embarrassed to do what I do than I am, you know, enjoying of it. Um, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love to show what I make and what I perform to people, but I prefer to keep it to small groups and closer friends. And, you know, if I was going to make it big, that would be awesome. But for now, I just love doing it how I'm doing it. Despite being a talented violinist, Louis decided to compose a rap song as his talent portion of the pageant. He wrote his lyrics to reference the Greek system, his fraternity, and even gave a few shout outs to his brothers. Reppin' Beta Theta Pi, class of 2015, Mr. Greek King, cause I'm living my dream. This is the In addition to Louis's rap, the pageant also showcased many other talented Greeks. The sky will get It's taking longer to fall asleep. In the end, the title went to Jordan Lake, a junior in the 17th Ave house. Although Louis didn't win the pageant, he still considered it a positive and worthwhile experience. Fundraising, I think in any scope, is kind of a hard thing to come about. And by adding 30 guys doing more or less girly things, it adds a fun element to it that's, that's way easier than just, look, we need money for this cause, will you donate? But actually perform well too. So it's kind of a nice balance. It was kind of like a dream, honestly. I went up there and before it I was super nervous, but afterwards I came out of it looking back and it was way cooler than it was going into it. I felt really good during the performance and after it I had a great rush come on, so I feel really good now. Austin, I don't think you're quite cut out. Yeah, I don't think I'm in shape enough to be sexy on stage. You could work out more. But that's so boring. Well, things like rock climbing aren't boring, and it's a great workout. Can you rock climb on campus? Sure, there's a whole rock climbing community. Let's check it out. Everybody knows about the IMA and its variety of gym services and equipment. You may have glimpsed the indoor climbing center while jogging or heard about it through the grapevine, but have you ever actually checked it out? Student manager Meg Coyne tells us more. 
I think the biggest thing we offer students is access to rock climbing um, really cheaply. We are pretty heavily subsidized, unlike the rest of the gyms in Seattle. We offer like a whole bunch of beginner classes um, and a very friendly environment, um, as opposed to other gyms that you know, kind of charge you an arm and a leg and uh, aren't full of students. One end of the climbing area has short climbs, while the other has climbs up to 40 feet high. So there's sort of two types of climbing. There's bouldering and rope climbing. Rope climbing, you're attached to a rope, and so when you fall, you're caught on that. <clears throat> so you need to wear a harness to attach yourself to it. Bouldering is lower to the ground, no ropes. You just jump down on the pads on the floor. Um, it's generally more powerful. Like, I kind of like to think of the difference of the two as being like, you take all the difficulty of a rope route and condense it into 12 feet. So they sort of present two different challenges. Closely tied to the climbing center is the UW Climbing Club, which is mostly focused on outdoor climbing, but uses the climbing center as a place to meet and practice. Club officer Valerie Wall tells us more. It's just a group of people that like to go out in the mountains um, very often, and uh, we meet um, once a week, usually 5.30 for uh, meetings, just um, sometimes covering uh, trips people have done, sometimes covering basic skills like tying knots or self-rescue, and just mainly just to get together and practice things. On the weekends, we have a forum where people can meet and plan trips, and then also post about trips that they've done with uh, other people of the club or just even other friends outside of the club. It's nice just to come in on a Monday morning after a long weekend and uh, see what everybody, all your friends have been up to pretty much. Climbing is a great way to stay in shape and presents interesting challenges, an aspect that PhD student Yan Chen is particularly fond of. So when you climb, uh, you, have, you, you, will, you will fall and you will, you will meet some problem. And I enjoy the process like solving the problem. And this is the reason I like climbing. If you are a climbing veteran, someone looking to get into climbing, or someone who just wants a fun way to stay in shape, the Climbing Center and Climbing Club would be great to check out. If you are interested in climbing and have not climbed yet, come to the gym here, take one of the classes. That's the best way to get started. Come to the meetings we have at 5.30 and just meet people in the club that do climb a lot. Talk to them, say you're interested. We definitely like telling you stories and <laughs> sharing our experiences and just kind of being excited about the outdoors. If you are hesitant like, uh, to climb or not, you maybe just join, you know, you just come to the climbing center, try a, a, a one or two program, and you'll feel this is a really good place for climbing. This is a really good place to start. Um, the environment's really friendly, super nice, um, it's cheap, <laughs> and uh, it's a sport that I think a lot of people get really into just because of like the kind of atmosphere involved. Cool. I'll have to remember that next time I want to thrash my triceps. You do that, Austin. Up next, we revisit one of the more memorable events from last quarter, the Make-A-Wish Foundation's flash mob for Alex Penny. I remember that. I was just walking through Red Square and there were limos and hundreds of people dancing and I had no idea what was going on. Which is funny because you had reporters filming it. Let's check out some of the footage they got. Friday, February 10th, was definitely not your average day in Red Square. The Make-A-Wish Foundation, in collaboration with the University of Washington and surrounding community, organized a giant robot-themed flash mob in honor of 11-year-old Alex Penny's wish to bring world peace with the help of robots. So today we had the awesome opportunity to grant Alex's wish. Alex originally asked for world peace and we tried to, to really find out what he truly wanted. He's a very sweet kid and what he really wanted was basically to see robots in action helping humans. So we planned a full day worth of activities for him. And he started the morning with one of the police departments doing anti-bomb robots because his, his wish is robots for world peace. Then he went to Children's Hospital. Uh, at robotic surgery with Dr. Tom Lenvey. Then he came over to the biorobotics lab and saw haptic rendering with a couple of my students. He went to Josh Smith's lab in electrical engineering and looked at robot there. And then this was a surprise flash mob. And he has some adventures tomorrow that I can't tell you about yet because they're still secret. When the time came, everyone stood in wait while Alex rolled into Red Square in his limo. 
The idea that you know Alex would have something that would relate to his robotics um, wish and then to have something that would involve the University of Washington and the students was something that was really important to us. I mean being on campus is really exciting for anyone and then to be able to have the students stand and, and cheer Alex on was an element that was a really fun way to um, accent this wish. It's been wonderful. The community has really supported us in making this wish happen for Alex. But he's the superstar. He wants to see peace throughout the world, throughout the community and he thinks robots will help us get there. I think Alex Alex and his family have got to be blown away from everything that they experienced today, especially the flash mob and the caring and compassion that this um, school ha has provided to him. Just coming out in a day where it's cloudy and it's raining a little bit, but there were hundreds of people out here. It's just awesome. They kept it a secret. No, Make-A-Wish kept it a secret from us. So we just went where they told us to go. So we've had a fun day. So they have been just driving us around and this is the end of our day and this is amazing. But just thank you. It was an amazing experience and it's just great heart. Their job done, the students cheered Alex on as he drove off, on to his adventures for the next day. Well, it's nice to know that we're at a university that's willing to do something like that for someone like Alex. Up next, we run our segment on the UW Running Club. Did I write that? Have you ever been walking down the quad in the evening and seen them? Rain or shine, they'll be there, standing in a circle in their athletic shoes, shorts, gloves, and occasional bits of headgear, planning their next excursion. They are the UW Husky Running Club, and we had an opportunity to speak with a few of the runners to find out exactly what they're all about. So Running Club is basically um, just an RSO here at UW. It's open to anyone, all levels of running abilities. We do um, three, five, and seven mile group runs on Mondays and Thursdays, and then Tuesdays and Fridays we do a little more competitive running, um, speed workouts at uh, local tracks and uh, hill workouts just in the area. Well, Running Club is just a great opportunity to get out twice a week, sometimes more, depending on if you want to do any of the more interesting runs that we have. But twice a week, you get to tell, decide which kind of distance you want to do, three, five, seven. It's a really great way to just like get out on the trails and kind of learn the area. I mean, there's some really great stuff you can go run around here. Um, I've only been probably on one repeat run with these guys so far, so um, that's pretty good. I've probably been here like six times, and so it's a great variety too. Husky Running Club also competes against other running clubs and participates in charity events. The next month we have a dual meet against uh, the University of Oregon um, in the Dempsey um, track here at UW, so uh, we're pretty excited about that. It's the second one that we've had. Last year um, our girls won, uh, but our boys lost, so we're hoping to come back this year and win both events. We do a lot of other races um, in the area. We do, um, there's like a Cupid run in uh, Fremont that goes, it's a nonprofit run, goes towards like children's lymphoma. Um, and we do a couple other local races, the Dog Dash here at UW as well. It looks fun enough, but do you have to be a track star to join? Everyone thinks that. It's not true at all. Uh, three mile groups tend to be a really nice pace for anyone that just wants to start running. Uh, you can push yourself harder five miles, go a little bit faster, seven miles faster. And it's really good progression. <laughs> People always tend to think that you can't do it because, oh, the running club, they're only people that have done cross country throughout high school. I can tell you half the people have didn't do cross country. The three mile group, at least the one I run with, is pretty conversational pace. And uh, uh, you know, just go out, have a good time, and come back and put in the miles. <laughs> if you're already into running, looking for a recreational way to get into running, or just searching for some jogging buddies, Running Club may be a great fit for you. Oh yeah, I've had a great time. Yeah, come out. It's the best. Everyone says they don't want to, but then they go run. And they're like, oh, I don't want to go to running club. Come out to running club, it's the best. Hmm, I wonder if I could join running club to get in shape for the Mr. Greek pageant. It looks like it would be really hard, though. Just eat well and exercise, man. It's not rocket science. But you know, it is rocket science. Rocket science is rocket science. <laughs> Up next, we have a segment on a group of UW students preparing for a NASA-sponsored competition. Nestled between Guggenheim and the Electrical Engineering Building is the Aerospace and Engineering Research Building. In it, a team of UW undergrads are working on a 10-foot rocket that will be entered in a NASA competition. Project leader Stuart Jacobs tells us more. The University Student Launch Initiative is a NASA-sponsored competition uh, where the goal is to create a rocket that can carry 
a scientific payload to an altitude of one mile above the ground and return to the ground with both the rocket and the payload intact. The competition is this April and will take place in Huntsville, Alabama. However, this is not the first time UW has competed. Jacobs, the only returning member from last year's team, tells us a little more about last year's event. I remember speaking to one of the NASA officials there. I was talking with him and I heard this explosion. And I turn around and I see our parachutes are drifting down. The team thought that they were going to launch. Nevertheless, um, the range safety officer told us that we couldn't launch because our rocket was unsafe. And a lot of us were taken aback that, uh, that they would do that because clearly it looked safe enough to us. Discouraged, none of the 2011 team wished to return but Jacobs, who assumed the role of project leader and built a new team for 2012. I remember being a little baffled that nobody on the team wanted to participate. Uh, some of them just didn't want to do it anymore because they didn't like the paperwork. I was under the impression that we were going to do this again, so I, I decided to volunteer to be project lead and started collecting team members. My first thought was, what kind of hell am I getting myself into? Though they lack experience, they have successfully launched a subscale model of their rocket that is one-third the size of the one that they will use for the competition in April. We spent a good amount of time during uh, winter break working on it, and we launched it in that nasty snow, and it just came down nicely. Um, I was really happy. April fast approaching, the team looks to the event with anticipation. It's scary thought, to be honest. Uh, I'm still worried that we won't get everything in time. And I feel pretty good about it. I don't, I don't think we're going to win this year. We're kind of a rookie team because we only have Stuart. But nevertheless, I think we're going to do a good showing for the UW. If the rocket that I built or I built like part of or I was part of flies up into air, reaches one mile and comes down safely, I'll be very happy. If rocketry sounds like something you might be interested in, the University Student Launch Initiative may be the perfect thing to get into, no matter what your background is. It's open to anybody, uh, as from what I can tell, because we need a, a lot of people from different backgrounds. Uh, I personally don't have any uh, rocketry experience myself beforehand, but I just thought I'd give it a shot and try it and see what I can do with it. There aren't a lot of opportunities like this. I mean, you know, we're working with NASA. We're launching a freaking big rocket. You get to work with uh, rockets uh, and possibly uh, play with high explosives. Need I say more? Remember, their launch is on April 18th, so be sure to give them your support. Hey, Andre, have you seen my new tattoo? I saw that a lot of the men's basketball team had some pretty sick ink, and I decided to get a tattoo myself. Wow, that is really cool. But um, I think it's Sharpie. It's actually a uh, whiteboard marker. <laughs> Up next, Lauren Lemieux talks to the men's basketball team about their tattoos. It's almost impossible to watch a basketball game nowadays without seeing a player or two sporting a few tattoos. They've become as common to the game as sweatbands or knee braces, and the UW's men's basketball team is no exception to the trend. I spoke with a few of the players about their ink. What was the first tattoo that you got? Uh, my mom's name on my wrist. I want to start out small because I didn't know how they was going to feel once I ended up getting tattoos. And why did you decide on your mom's name for your first tattoo? Uh, that's the woman of my life, that uh, inspiration, motivation, and I dedicate basketball to her, so. My first tattoo was my grandmother's name. Louise is my grandmother, and she's the one that raised me since I was younger. You know, since I was four months, my mom couldn't take care of me. So in, in, in reference to her, I got this on my own. Tributes to family members are what got most of these hoopers started with tattoos, but they also found inspiration for their ink in other places. Seattle locals Tony Roten and Hakeem Stewart both have pieces dedicated to their city. Now, I was actually born in Mississippi, but I've been in Seattle since I was about five years old. And I actually, I love my city, so I decided to get it tatted. Additionally, Stewart is a big fan of quotations. He describes how each quote relates to a different aspect or moment of his life. This quote is um, walking on a dream. I decided to get this once I committed to UW, because I'm finally living out my dream of playing college basketball. How about this one up here? What's this one about? Um, it says, take the good with the bad, even if the bad always the good. Um, just taking life for what it's worth, you know, it may not 
the cars may not be dealt the way you want them. Stewart also has this tattoo of an ice cream cone holding a basketball on his left forearm. It's been my nickname since sixth grade. My, um, my um, middle school basketball coach said I played smooth. And he was like, I'm going to call you ice cream. This one here is still peeling a little bit. Is this recent? Or? This is my newest one, actually. It's the uh, fighter jet from World War I, and I, I got faith over it. And then right here is the star was born, and that's my birthday. And then right here, weather the storm with the grace from God. It was a coat that I chose out for this. And I got it the day before practice, and I was getting beat up a lot because my arm was burning. But I just wore a long sleeve and didn't tell coach. While head coach Lorenzo Romar didn't seem to be too keen on the idea of tattoos, he explained why he tolerates his players' ink. It's kind of the culture. A lot of them have them before they get here, and that's their choice. And that's what they choose to do, and their, their family's fine with it. That's their decision. Coach Romar let me in on a little secret about his own experience with tattoos. And do you have any tattoos yourself? I do not. I don't have any tattoos. I will confess there was a day when I was probably 9 or 10 that I'd get some in like in a Cracker Jack box and put the little tattoos on my hand that would wash away later. I will confess to that one. Unlike Romar's tats, the player's ink won't be washing off anytime soon. Freshman guard Tony Roden explains the permanent nature of this art form. Tattoos, they last forever. You, know, you can't just erase tattoos, so you want to be able to get something that means something a lot to you. And for me, you know, the one thing that I always said about tattoos is Whenever I get tattooed, I never want to regret it, you know what I'm saying? And you can never regret having your family members on, on your arms or wherever it is on your body. Got a dog tag, Cash, my dog's name. And then uh, ATL's initials, and my, my name, my two sister's name. I got a um, guardian angel right here. And then on my back of my arm, I got a, a mom, man on a mission. And then I got um, throwing up L's, you know, switch. From my crew loyalty of everything, you know, bigger on loyalty, so. Desmond Simmons' favorite tattoo is this prayer that covers his left upper arm. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. This is a prayer that I, I don't know how many times I heard this prayer when I was younger. And um, it just kind of, as I got older, I started to take from it. And I don't know, it's something I really liked, and I feel like, you know, my arm, you know, something that stick with me. While the players really liked their tattoos, they were all a little nervous about mom and dad's initial reactions. Gant admitted to getting his first tattoo done without his mother even knowing about it. I hid it from my mom for a long time, but she kind of found out. You know, I was kind of, I had my hand on my head in the car, and then she looked over, and she was like, what's that on your wrist? What's wrong with your wrist? And I, I tried to hide it, but she, she knew what it was. Once their first tattoos were out in the open, the players began to get more and more, and some already have plans for future ink. Uh, I think one of my next tattoos is going to be um, misunderstood somewhere in my body, you know, because that's one of the big things I feel that like I am, you know, so misunderstood and definitely a basketball tattoo. I got to get one of those. In what ways do you feel you're misunderstood? You know, just just, just how people, you know, think of me, you know. Just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, people think, you know, I'm a bad person or, you know, arrogant, you know, but it's, I'm just different when you want you get to know me, so that's why I consider myself misunderstood. After I finish this tattoo, I feel like I'll be done until I have kids. I have plans to get my kid's name on my wrist, and that'll be it. There are a lot more to tattoos than just how they look. For the Huskies men's basketball team, they represent family, friends, and words to live by. Reporting for the Daily's Double Shot, I'm Lauren Lemieux. You know, I'm kind of glad that my tattoo washes off. I got it during a really dark time, and you know, it's been a stressful quarter. It definitely has been. But you know, those snow days definitely lighten things up. Oh my gosh, right? You know, I wish I could just like go outside and build a snowman right now. Go sledding. Make snow angels. There's a special time in the winter season when the University of Washington campus turns into something else. When browns and greens turn to white, puddles of water freeze over and students throw on a few extra layers of clothes. And that time is when it snows. These students share their thoughts about the snow and ice. Well, it's been pretty beautiful, but kind of a pain to walk through. It kind of stopped me from doing homework yesterday. I've just been sleeping inside the house, trying to hide from it. Uh, it's been sort of slippery, but uh, I mean, nothing that drastic. And the ice, especially like on campus, it, you know, it, it would be fine, but outside campus, you know, it's all icy. I remember last year when it did snow and they closed the school, I slipped like 
12 times. I decided not to bike to class today. I wish I was in the mountains snowboarding. My favorite part of it is just waking up and looking outside and just seeing the whole campus that I woke up to the whole year and suddenly it's all white. It transforms the feel of the whole campus. We've got this one, this one, this one, and my sweater. Yeah. I definitely take the snow over the rain. Ah, uh, I hope if we get a lot more snow, the classes would get canceled. And classes did get canceled. This was the result. <laughs> For us students, snow is more than the white powder on the ground. It's a chance to create, relax, connect, and have a good time. Well, it's been a wild ride. That's all we have for you this quarter. We'll have new episodes for you starting in April. In the meantime, catch us Saturdays at 7 p.m. for our other episodes. Or on youtube.com slash the daily for full episodes and extra content. Thanks for watching. I'm Austin Seatontop. And I'm Andre Stackhouse. We'll catch you next time on The Daily's Double Shot.